like they did Clinton Woods, Terry, regarding when Clinton was uh, uh, in the studio at night and uh, he, they were, he were an undercard fight and he said something and they said, oh, uh, we, we want you to say this and Clinton said, I, I thought you got me here for my uh, opinion and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a world champion. They said, yeah, but we want you to push this, whatever. And he said, yeah, but that's not right. <laughs> you know, so you think Andy Lee's now gone like they did it with Robin Reed as well they've done it with Clinton do you think he's towing the company line uh, Andy so Lee your question, yeah right? you're a retired boxer mm. you're a southpaw you know what it's like to be the underdog in a world title fight. is he a southpaw Lee yeah right yeah 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 you're, you're a southpaw everything about Ryder you've probably been through in your career yeah how are you Yeah. It didn't make any sense. How did he give Ryder the... Uh, how did he not give Ryder the 12th? Everybody in boxing gave Ryder 12th round. He, except Andy Lee and Eddie Hearn. It's crazy. But, but i tell you what I did like about the Sky coverage. So I don't know if you listened to the post-fight interview with Eddie Hearn. And Hearn said something... You know how Hearn likes to just talk out of his backside? Yeah. And no one ever really questions him on it. So he said something like, halfway through the fight... All these promoters were texting me saying they wanted to fight Cam Smith. And all Andy Clark did was go, Can you tell us who those promoters are, please? And he shat his load. What did he say? He was like, I, I don't have to tell you that. And I was like, I like this Andy Clark guy. Yeah, well, that, that, and, and there's some problems with him behind scenes at the moment where he, he's been pulled or something, Annie, or. Well, I, I think it'll be hard for them to do that because. Andy, Andy Clark's now become the, the fan's favourite because he seems to be the one guy that can't be bribed. It's one guy that what? He can't be bribed. They can't be oh, bribed. yeah, yeah, he's one of them. He's like a Bob Me, isn't he? He won't, he, won't, he won't tow the company line. He'll just say it as, he, as it is. That's why Bob Me don't get as many gigs now, isn't it, there? Because so they all get days. They have contracts where they get days. And uh, Bob Me, the, day, the days of the pundits are all getting shared out uh, at the moment. They're bringing all sorts of different people on board to freshen things up. Now, this is how I look at it, right? If you don't tow the company line at Sky, what happens is you don't get invited on as much. You see where I'm coming from? And I think that's maybe happened with a few people. I know it's happened with Clinton Woods and Robin Reed, but if you can't take notice of somebody like Clinton Woods, British Commonwealth European and a world champion, or Robin Reed, uh, uh, Olympic bronze, world amateur silver junior, and what else? WBC world champion. But you know he's been beat four world champions and been in with the best of the best. If you can't listen to those guys. What's it all about? Is it about pushing a narrative for money and pay-per-view? What is going on at Sky? It, it, it has to be, because my question then becomes, where's Joe Calzaghe? You know, why doesn't Calzaghe get... I was thinking about that this morning, and I think, why don't, why don't Joe Calzaghe ever ever bother with it? He don't... Is it, real quick? Is it because he don't get on with Carl Froch? And he's, uh, and he's they there? They can't buy him. Yeah, they can't buy him. He'd just tell him straight, wouldn't he? Needy. That's it, it's right, people who are really cool and pretend. To be honest with you, mate, I think the whole thing's a shambles. I think I think Sky's boxing coverage is stale. Yeah. They need to evolve. I think boxing coverage in general needs to evolve because it's not that good. And we should be like the Americans. I love the fact that on commentary, you get Tim Bradley and Andre Ward. And you're like, I can't question these guys. Oh, you can't, can you? Because they've been there and done it, haven't they? Yeah, PBC get Lennox involved. Yeah, he, he tells it straight, Lennox. He doesn't need the money, he just tells it straight. Yeah. Now, what you've got at Sky at the moment, you've got people who... How can I explain it? Uh, for instance, Dennis, he's not going to give you... 
too much so you don't need him is going to give you enough so you need him sky are going to have people around them that need them but they're not going to but let them let them do what they want so they, they can say what they want and don't need them that kind of thing is that that what you're looking at terry that <laughs> do you know i think from top to bottom in boxing we've got to start asking the obvious question why are loads and loads of middle-aged supposedly family men so willing to trade down to london to vegas to cardiff to leeds for for a week at a time away from their families on the behalf of Sky? Is it because it's all expenses paid and there are perks that come with doing that job? Yeah. The, the after hours entertainment. Did you ever see that video where they had Spencer Spencer Oliver pissed out of his nut and Adam Smith there filming him drunk and Johnny Nelson's holding him up? And I'm like, this is probably what happens all the time with the Sky lot. They get yeah. pissed up, a few brothels, maybe even some drugs here and there. And and Hearn knows all about this, so he just says, listen, everyone needs to toe the line, or this gets out to the media. Yeah, well, Glenn McClure is uh, working for Dazone now. Oh, is he back in the fold? He's, he's just on that Dazone streaming uh, thing, I've been told, so... Fair play to him, he's good, I like him. Yeah, well, he, he's doing our show next Friday, I get on our eight with Glenn. Am but I doing the show as well? Yeah, he, he, oh, pardon what? Yeah, you're coming as well, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to be working yeah, with me. I, I thought I was doing commentary. Well, you might be, yeah. You don't know. You'll have to see Dennis. Because you you're you you're Dennis's favourite at the moment, you, Terry. you pushed me out. I'm just uh, got T-boy, aren't I, again? Nah, <laughs> Paul. Listen, you know what? You know why that is a porky? You know why you call yourself a T-boy? Here's why. You spend so much of your time kicking down the establishment. Like, if you half that and went... Let me use the second half of my time to keep bothering sponsors until I have all of these relationships that I bring to the table. Mate, you will do what you want. Like, that's what I say to people. If you own four or five sponsorships and you own those relationships, mate, you do what you want in boxing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is what this is why I'm having to tone it down today and be a little bit more professional. Dennis says to me, I don't want my phone ringing uh, with any more complaints. <laughs> He says, uh, he says, because when it rings down, they say, uh, is Porky still with you? And he's like, oh my God, what's he done? But now I'm going to tone it down a little bit a little bit now. But I'm starting to get into the psyche of how, how all this works. This boxing thing that I've got him wrapped, wrapped around in the last five years. And uh, it, it's, it shocks me at times, but... But this with Sky at the moment is a fundamental, and that's a big word for me, a Yorkshireman, it's a fundamental problem at the moment because they're pushing this narrative like, uh, and it's, it's all, like Joe Gallagher come out on IFL. Now, he's turned around to that kid and he said, are you taking the PISS? And started swearing now. On that, it's about 500 dislikes and about 20 likes, but Coogan's disabled all the comments for the video. And it's not the first time he's done that when something's gone a bit tits up. And I'm not happy with Coogan for doing that. I'm not happy at all. I have sent him a message saying, what, why are you disabling comments on, on subjects that we want to comment on? Why are you always doing that? Because the Eddie Hearn don't want... T don't, don't want people to push for this rematch, does he, with Ryder? Because the fans want the rematch. John Ryder deserves a rematch. You were robbed. I'm not a Darren Barker fan, but Darren Barker, I've got you boys' backs on this. And Tony Sims. I like Tony. He's all right. I like John Ryder as well. I think he's a family man. He comes across well. He took it well on chin. Now, John Ryder's had two fights that he's lost... Because he, 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 one of them, Billy, Billy Joe Saunders, it were very close. The Blackwell one, I think he, he got caught, didn't he? And there's another one. But but the other ones, he's been robbed. Rocky Fielding robbed him in Liverpool. Callum Smith's robbed him in Liverpool. Obviously, it's not Callum and Rocky's fault. It's the judges. But John Ryder's career, he has had bad luck. He's always been the B-side. And he's had no favours whatsoever. Like Josh Whale. He's had no favours, you know. Nobody's done out for him. That's what I think. 
What do you what do you think to that, Terry? Churchill speech, that. Well, that's what I think anyway. I think John Ryder deserves a rematch. And Joe Gallagher turned nasty in that interview with that young kid. He turned really nasty. And he, what, you, what are you taking the piss? What are you on about? Rematch is going. What are you on about? Joe Gallagher was screaming blue murder for a rematch with Arthur Abraham for a fight that he said he thought was a draw. But because the cards were 117, 111, 118, 110 or something like that, he was screaming, don't quote me on them cards because I might have that wrong, he was screaming for the Abraham rematch and do you know what? Callis Howland and Eddie put it on and they took Paul Smith back out to uh, Germany and he got beat comprehensively that time, didn't he? And then he went out there within a year again as well, fighting Zuga. I mean, how many chances are these people getting? It's unbelievable, Andre Ward, De Gale, Groves. There's six losses there against world champions. Well, it is, isn't it? Paul Smith has gone naught and six against world champions. Former, current and future. De Gale iced him. Groves iced him. Zuga beat him. Ward iced him. And Abraham twice. That's six. Stephen Smith, he's been in with four or is it five world champions and not beat any. Liam's been in with uh, Jamie Mongui, is it a summit? And the other one is uh, the, the gingerhead Mexican kid. And he, he's gone two, Norton 2. Callum's gone 3 0, isn't he? He's 3 0 against world champions. Well, like I've just said to you there, Tech Callum's wins off the other ones. They've just had chance after chance, haven't they? The Smiths are 3 and 12 and 0. 3 12 and 0 against former, current, and future world champions. You get Joe Gallagher's telling us how great a trainer he is. How is he a great trainer when you look at the statistics? He had Macklin, he had Martin Murray. Has he had Martin Murray as well? I think he has, hasn't he? Yeah. No, I'm not sure if he's had Martin Murray. Don't quote me on that. He's had Macklin. He's had Marcus Morrison. He's had, he's had a stable of fighters there. He ruined a generation. Joe, you ruined a generation. Don't tell me you trainer at year and all that, mate, because it's a load of rubbish, man. You blagged it and you've got so far, you've made millions out of the job. You've made yourself a millionaire out of very limited ability as a trainer. That's my opinion. Joe Gallagher's not so keen to start putting on big shows now he's a promoter, is he? Eh? They make you laugh. They're there with their hand all, out all the time, aren't they? It's no wonder Frank Warren don't want to work with him. But no, I just think that Joe Gallagher could have, could have done better with Paul Smith. I was a Paul Smith fan one night years ago. Till he started getting heavy with people on Twitter. Paul Smith, right, were tipped to win a world title. He was big news at one point, one of years ago. Do you remember? He was big news. He, he got a... He had a decorated amateur career, didn't he? He fought Pascal, didn't he? Fought a gold medal. Do you know what I mean? But I, I think that he made bad decisions with Paul Smith, and then once he realised that Paul Smith were on slide, he just kept throwing him in, not building him up, not giving him credible fights. Paul Smith's best win is who? Tony Dodson. I mean, he's a nice enough kid, Tony Dodson, but. Tony Dodson could have done better, but he had a bike crash. Paul Smith fought him after the bike crash. He was never the same fighter. You know, who the, who's Liam Smith's best win? Liam Williams. So you've got Tony Dodson, Liam Williams, and George Groves as their best wins, the Smiths. That is it. People were talking about him like the first family in boxing. It's craziness, man, Terry. Yeah, that's it. Paul Smith should have won a world title, but he had he had enough goods at job, didn't he? But anyway, moving on from the Smiths and all the Andy Lee and Tony Bellew coming out with that explanation at the end, it drove me insane. They're asking Tony Bellew his opinion about Callum Smith. Oh my God. Do you know what I mean? Look, I know what, I've seen Callum Smith spar, let me tell you, and he's a good fighter, but... 
People are starting to put him in pound for pound lists. So you're losing your shit coming out with all that pound for pound stuff. Now, let's move on from the Liverpool. I mean, let's just have a look at the rest of the Liverpool show first. We had Anthony Fowler, didn't we? A Coldwell fighter. Now, he's not the real deal, is he, Anthony Fowler? Do you think? Right, looking at this card here, right, the card, right, you've got Marcus Malloy, 1-0, fighting a guy, 6-94. and 94. Tom Aitchison, 1-0, fighting a guy, 1-1. One one. Tommy Whittaker Art, Thomas Art, 3-0, fighting a guy, 6-10 and 10 and a draw. Stephen Smith, 27-4. and four. Uh, I like Stephen Smith, he's my favourite one out of a lot of them, but although I was a Paul Smith fan years ago, I like Stephen Smith, I've met him, I spoke to him at the Frotch Groves weigh-in, the first one in Manchester, he just fell out with Frank Warren then, he seemed a nice kid, uh, obviously he's going to back his brothers, uh, if he's back on, uh, back on the fighting again, I'm glad because He's had a, he had a bad ear injury and he always comes across as a nice kid and I think he's got a nice little style. Uh, and I think he's a bigger puncher than what a lot of people make out. Now, after Stephen Smith, Tom Farrell, 17-2, uh, he fought Sean Dodd and got beat. Anthony Fowler beat Harry Scarf, an 8-0 and and kid. That was a good fight on paper. Craig Glover, 10-2. Lost to Chris Billum Smith. What do you think to that fight? Uh, well, number one, how the hell did Craig Glover get that fight? Like, Craig Glover is. Is he managed by Bellew? Yeah, he's the Bellew's mate, isn't he? Oh, is he Bellew's mate? I'm not sure. Fowler. Is Fowler and Glover managed by Bellew, both of them? So I think Glover's managed by Bellew, and I think Tom Whittaker Hart might be as well. Yeah, so Bellew's basically got. One, two, so Bellew's the manager of three fighters on the show and he's friends with the two of the Smiths. So out of the three, six, nine people on the show, he's close friends with two and he manages three and he's a pundit on the night. How does that work? If that were Liverpool against Man United and Liverpool played crap, do you think Graeme Souness would go in on Liverpool? Of course he would, wouldn't he? They don't mess about with football pundits, boxing pundits, see they're, they're all for the mates, aren't they? Yeah, but they're also, uh, that's how you get your money though, so if you look at football, like, there's money that comes in from everywhere, it's not controlled by the football clubs. Whereas in boxing, the money's controlled by the promoters and the broadcasters, so you have to be nice to them. It's annoying. Yeah. So, James Tennyson, what do you think to him? Is that the kid who fought for a world title and got beat in America? Yeah, he got beat in Boston against Tevin Farmer, didn't he? Yeah, he's the Irish kid, isn't he? Tennyson, right. You know what? Hearns just digging up all of these dog shit names that people are supposed to believe in. The only guy on that list who I'm like, he's credible, is that Thomas Whitaker Hart, because at least he's an ABA champion. Uh, I think he won at 81 kilos as well. But then he yeah. disappeared after that. Then what? He disappeared for a bit after that. So we're like, well, what happened to him? I don't know, but uh, I'm glad Stephen Smith won. Now, he, he, he's uh, James Tennyson. Stephen Smith, right, is six in Britain again. He's never won a... I don't think he's won a European title, has he? No. He's got a Commonwealth and a British on his record. He's never, he's never won a European title. I'd like to see Stephen Smith go for a European title and make one last run at it. He's still on, he's, but he's 35 next birthday, Stephen Smith. So is he, has he just gone on there because he might be able to sell a few tickets, do you think? Yeah, man, it's a whole thing of trying to keep Liverpool relevant, even though they don't have any talent coming through anymore. 
Tom Farrell, do you think he's going to do anything? He's just got beat against Sean Dodd. He's ranked 258 in world, Tom Farrell. So, do you know why Robert Davis broke his ribs? Uh, yeah, the the uh, the show on the whole, they probably paid Callum Smith and John Ryder good money, because Sims is a wee rider, so they've got paid good money, were not they? And the rest of them have all got chicken feed, haven't they? Well, like I said, you've got Bellew there, he's a pundit, and he's got men on the show, isn't that a conflict of interest? And... And in Bellew's old trainer, trained Fowler as well. It's all a bit nice and cosy, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what Hearn wants. Hearn wants to create a network of people who are all dependent on him. That's what he's created. Yeah, that's what he's created. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. Now, the only person who said to me that Callum Smith won is Dale Nichols, you know, who comes on the channel. He's he's like now Callum Smith definitely won that fight. He's the only person that, apart from Steve Bunce, that said Callum Smith's won. Steve Bunce had it by a round, and Joe Gallagher had it by nine rounds to three, eight rounds to four, and Dale Nichols. Nobody else has said to me that. Oh, Eddie Hearn said not to me, but on telly said he thought Callum nicked it by a round. But that's just a cop out, isn't it? To make Wilder feel better, isn't it? Because the scorecards, Terry O'Connor, I mean, he's 67 next birthday. Now, he's got to be finished now as a judge, can he? I don't think he refs no more, does he now? I hope not. Well, he can't ref out after 60, can you, in UK, or is it 65? Uh, is he 65 already? He's 66 on here, looking here. He's had 541. He's been a judge 541 times. He's been a judge 50 odd times this year and we're only into November. I wonder how many of them 50 odd times he's judged that he has messed up. Bearing in mind he had Parker beating Yui comfortably by 118 to 110 I believe. Yeah, that's the first goal card. Mick Hennessy agrees with me. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He said, what the F is going on? So, let's put this to bed now then. John Ryder, what's, what next for John Ryder and Callum Smith? Callum Smith sails off 27-0, 19 knockouts. He's the number one ranked in the world, super middle. Ring magazine and the WBA title. I don't, I'm not into all this diamond stuff. The WBC champion is not Callum Smith. So he's not unified, is he? I don't think anyone will fight him because no one really cares about him. Number one and number two, Hearn has enough enemies that people just avoid him. Yeah, yeah, so he, he's stuck with Callum Smith. And if Callum Smith took a fight in Liverpool, I bet he'd had to pay him well, you know, because he's been. He's earned, he's earned, he's earned, is it 9.5 million Callum Smith's earned so far as a boxer? How much? 9.5 million. That's sterling. Well, he had the two. He had the the soup, the WBSS tournament. He fought on Joshua's on the card, and he's had a few other defences, hasn't he? So he's done well, hasn't he? Now the next show I want to talk to you about is the one, the only Richard Towers' boy, Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz. What do you think to that, Terry? Yeah. Everything else is just kind of build up to that one moment. I think Wilder took the approach in that fight of let me just take no punishment, and then when he gets time, then I'll catch him. And that seems to be what happened in the fight. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. What an hour, man. He punched through the guard, didn't he? Wilder they punched through his guard. Bringing up his his left elbow, 
So he was catching it kind of where the bicep and the forearm meet. He was catching it all the time. And so what Wilder did in the seventh was instead of coming around the side, he went straight down the middle. But Ortiz almost turns into the shot because he didn't come around the side again. It just gets caught beautifully. And he even tried to resist it, but he just saw his legs give up and almost just explode under him. Do you think, Terry, that Wilder is a little bit better technically than what people are making out? Because they're all saying he's this one-trick pony, but it's a good it's a good trick that he's got in it. Do you think he's a bit better than what people make out? So I look at it like this, Russ. There's a boxing textbook, right, about how you're supposed to go about boxing, things you should teach people. Wilder's one of those people that sits outside of that textbook. So we almost can't can't measure him against what we expect boxers of his size to do mm. because he's been successful outside of the system so we almost have to catch up to where he is and go how is he doing this at 15 that, stone as well say that again how is he doing this at 15 stone it, yeah n nothing Wilder does makes sense it just doesn't make any sense so with that considered all Wilder has to do is avoid taking serious punishment from his opponents and he's good at doing that because he's so long and he's able to use his jab to keep you away his jab isn't soft and then when he when he when you start to tire and he sees those hands start to drop then he's starting to think about am i going to hit him with the uppercut am i going to hit him with the hook or am i going to go straight down the middle yeah and, and obviously he went straight down the middle didn't he Yeah. You can talk about Fury Freeze, this, Fury that. If someone said to you, here's a ticket for a fight, you can either go watch Wilder box an elite level heavyweight or Fury box an elite level heavyweight. Or all off to watch Wilder. Yeah. You definitely are because you hate Tyson. <laughs> I don't hate Tyson. I don't <laughs> hate Tyson. I just don't like what he's done to McKennessy, that's all. No, I didn't, but I heard about it. What did he say? It was a bad piece. I, I, don't know how I'm still, I don't know how I'm still doing this. Everyone shafted me. You know, I was loyal. I put my own money into this, and people just turned their backs on me, and all this sort of stuff. Mm, it's not nice, is it, for Mick? I feel for Mick. I, well, listen, boxing's... The, he knows this more than anyone else. And, like, you know, he's a gangster with the paperwork, too. Like, it's not like Mick Hennessy's a charity. Yeah, there's no flies on Mick. He knows how the game works. He's just that he's discovered talent though over years. And Darren Barker, Eubank Jr., Carl Froch, Tyson Fury, Yui Fury, and they all seem to leave him, don't they? Apart from Yui. Yeah, well, you know what I mean, though, don't you? He, he, sat, he got him to sign, didn't he? Yeah. And somewhere along the line, they all sort of. It all went wrong, did it? He might, maybe he might have to look at himself and say, is it me? Have I done something wrong? Is he making mistakes? I don't know. He didn't deliver for his guys, and that's what you're supposed to do when you're promoted. You've got to give Hearn his credit. He delivers for his guys. Yeah. Like they, all his guys eat, and Hearn drives a hard bargain. Whereas I think Hennessy kind of... Hennessy's just happy to be alive, He's happy to what? He's just happy to be 